Well, hi everyone, Steve Patterson here again from Photoshop Essentials. In this video, I show you how to place multiple images into your text with Photoshop. In a previous video, which I've linked to in the description, I showed you how to place a single image into an entire word. But this time, I'll take things further and show you how to split a word into its individual letters and place a different image in each letter. I'm using Photoshop 2021. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and let's get started. I'll start from the beginning by creating a new document and adding the text. But if you've already done that, you can use the chapter times in the description to jump ahead. If you're on the home screen, like I am here, create a new document by clicking the Create New button. Or if you're in Photoshop's main interface, which you can get to by clicking the PS logo, create a new document by going up to the File menu and choosing New. In the New Document dialog box, enter your settings. I'll set the width to 3000 pixels and the height to 1800. The resolution is 300 pixels per inch. The color mode is RGB. Background contents is set to white and the color profile is sRGB. Then create the new document by clicking the Create button. To add the text, select the Type tool from the toolbar. And then, in the Options bar, choose your font. Since we'll be placing images into the text, larger fonts will work best. I'm using HWT Arts, which I installed from Adobe Fonts. Set the type size to 72 points, so we're starting with the largest preset size. And to make it easier to center the text in the document, set the justification to Center. Set the type color to black by clicking the color swatch and setting the R, G, and B values in the color picker to zero. Of course, once we've placed images into the text, the color won't matter. Click in the center of the document and add your text. I'll type the word fun. Click the check mark in the options bar to accept it. To resize the text, go up to the edit menu and choose free transform and then resize the text by dragging the handles. If you press and hold the Alt key on a Windows PC or the Option key on a Mac while dragging a handle, you'll resize the text from its center. Then click and drag inside the Transform box to move the text into position. Click the check mark in the Options bar to accept it. In my case, the letters are a bit too close together. To fix that, I'll go to the Properties panel down to the Character Options, and I'll click inside the box for the tracking value. Then on my keyboard, I'll press the up arrow key once to increase the value from 0 to 20, and that moves the letters a bit farther apart. I'll press the Enter key or the Return key on a Mac to accept it. At this point, we're ready to place our images into the text, and in the Layers panel, we see the text on a type layer. If we were placing a single image into the entire word, we could leave the text as standard type. But we want to place a different image in each letter, so we need a way to split the word into its individual letters. To do that, we'll convert the type into a shape. With the type layer selected, go up to the Type menu and choose Convert to Shape. You'll know that the letters are now shapes by the path outlines around them. And in the Layers panel, the Shape icon in the Preview thumbnail tells us that the Type layer is now a Shape layer. We need to place each letter on its own separate layer. And to do that, we need to make a copy of the Shape layer for each letter in the word. In my case, I have three letters. So since I already have the first Shape layer, I need to make two more copies. To make the first copy, click on the Shape layer, and drag it down onto the New Layer icon. And the first copy appears above the original. Then click on the copy and drag it down onto the New Layer icon. And the second copy appears. I now have three shape layers, one for each letter. Next, delete the letters you don't need on each layer, starting with the original shape layer. First, turn off the layers above it by clicking their visibility icons. Then click on the original shape layer to select it. In the toolbar, select the Path Selection tool. 
Then simply click on each letter you don't need and delete it. On this layer, we only need the first letter. So click on the second letter to select it, and you'll know that it's selected by the path outline around it. Then to delete the letter, press the backspace key on a Windows PC or the delete key on a Mac. Then click on the third letter to select it and press backspace or delete. Do the same thing with any other letters in the word until only the first letter remains. In the layers panel, we now see only that first letter in the layers thumbnail. We need to do the same thing with the other shape layers. So first, turn off the original shape layer by clicking its visibility icon. Then turn on the shape layer above it and click on the layer to select it. On this second layer, we only need the second letter in the word. So click on the first letter to select it and press backspace or delete to delete it. Then click on the third letter and press backspace or delete. Again, we see in the layer's thumbnail that we've deleted everything except the second letter. Turn the layer off, then turn on the third layer and click on it to select it. This time, we only need the third letter. So a faster way to select the first two letters at once is to simply click and drag over them. Then with both letters selected, press backspace or delete. And now we have just the third letter in the word. If you have more than three letters, you'll need to continue with these steps for each additional letter. In my case, I have all the layers I need. And if I turn all three shape layers back on, the entire word reappears. So with each letter on its own layer, we're ready to add our images. We'll start by placing an image into the first letter. Click on its layer in the Layers panel to select it, and then turn the other layers off for now by clicking their visibility icons. Now we want the image to appear on a layer directly above the letter it's being placed into. So make sure you have the correct layer selected. Then to add an image, go up to the File menu and choose Place Embedded. Navigate to the folder that holds your images, select the image you want to place into the letter, and click Place. The image opens in the document, and if the image is larger than your document size, it's automatically resized to fit. Notice that Photoshop also opens the free transform command, so we can resize the image further. But we have another step to do first. So for now, click the check mark in the options bar to accept it. Also notice in the layers panel that Photoshop added the image on its own layer directly above the first letter. To place the image into the letter, click on the layers panel menu icon and choose create clipping mask. The clipping mask hides any part of the image that's not sitting directly above the letter, which creates the illusion that the image is actually inside it. Then to move and resize the image within the letter, go up to the Edit menu and choose Free Transform. Drag your subject into View and drag the handles to resize the image as needed. You'll probably need to go back and forth between moving and resizing until it looks right. When you're done, click the check mark in the options bar to close Free Transform. Then just repeat the same steps to place your images into the other letters. In the Layers panel, turn on the second letter and then click on the layer to select it so that Photoshop will place the image directly above it. Go up to the File menu and choose Place Embedded. Then select your next image and click Place. The image opens in the document and again Photoshop opens the Free Transform command, which we don't need just yet, so click the check mark in the Options bar to close it. In the Layers panel, we see that the image was added above the second letter. To place it into the letter, click the Layers panel menu icon and choose Create Clipping Mask. Then go up to the Edit menu, choose Free Transform, and then drag your subject into View, and drag the handles to resize the image as needed. When you're done, click the check mark in the Options bar. I have one more letter to go, so I'll turn the third letter on 
and I'll click on the layer to select it. Then I'll go up to the File menu and choose Place Embedded. I'll select my third image and I'll click Place. When the image opens, I'll close Free Transform by clicking the check mark. And again, we see the image on its own layer above the letter. I'll click the Layers Panel menu icon and I'll choose Create Clipping Mask. Then I'll go back to the Edit menu, back to Free Transform. I'll drag the woman into view and I'll drag the handles to resize the image. And that looks good. I'll accept it by clicking the check mark. And now every letter in the word has a different image placed inside it. At this point, the main effect is done. We've placed all of our images into the text, but there's a few more things we can do. We can change the background color or remove the background completely and make it transparent. And we can add layer effects like a stroke or a drop shadow. I'll show you how to do each of these things in a moment. But first, let's take all of the image layers and shape layers that make up the effect and place them into a group. To do that, click on the top image layer to select it if it's not selected already. Then press and hold the Shift key on your keyboard and click on the shape layer at the bottom, the one for the first letter. This selects both layers plus every layer in between. Then to place them into a group, click on the Layers Panel menu icon and choose New Group from Layers. Give the group a name. I'll name mine Text and Images. Then click OK. And back in the Layers Panel, all of the layers we selected are now inside the group. You can twirl the group open or closed by clicking the arrow next to the folder icon. So what if you want to remove the background behind the letters and make it transparent? All you need to do is turn off the background layer by clicking its visibility icon. And now we have a checkerboard pattern for a background, which is how Photoshop represents transparency. That's not what I want though, so I'll turn the background layer back on. To change the color of the background, click on the background layer to select it. Then click the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon and choose a Solid Color Fill Layer. To choose a new color, you could select one from the Color Picker, or you can sample a color from one of the images. Just move your mouse cursor over an image and click on a color to sample it. You can keep clicking on different spots to find the color that works best. In my case, I want something that won't distract from the images. So in the color picker, I'll choose a light gray by setting the saturation, the S value, to 0% and the brightness, the B value, to 90%. When you're done, click OK to close the color picker. Back in the layers panel, the fill layer was added above the background layer. You can turn the fill layer on and off by clicking its visibility icon. Let's finish off by adding a stroke and a drop shadow to the letters. But rather than adding them to each letter one at a time, we can add them to every letter at once by applying them to the group. First, click on the group to select it. Then click the effects icon and choose stroke. In the stroke options, click the color swatch and choose a color for the stroke from the color picker. I'll choose white by setting the R, G, and B values to 255. Then click OK. Change the position of the stroke to outside so it appears around the outside of the letters. And then drag the size slider to set the stroke width. I'll set mine to 16 pixels. And we see the stroke around the letters. Finally, add a drop shadow by choosing it from the column on the left. One way to adjust the shadows, angle, and distance is to simply click and drag in the document. Or you can enter specific values in the dialog box. I'll set the angle to 120 degrees and the distance to 50 pixels. Then to soften the shadow edges, I'll increase the size to 25 pixels. When you're done, click OK to close the Layer Style dialog box. And back in the Layers panel, we see our stroke and drop shadow listed below the group. And here's one final tip if you want to make sure that your text is centered in the document. 
First, make sure the group is selected, and then select the Move tool from the toolbar. In the Options bar, click the Align and Distribute icon, the three dots. Set the Align To option to Canvas, and then click the icons for Align Horizontal Centers and Align Vertical Centers. And there we have it. That's how to place multiple images into your text with Photoshop. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you found it helpful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Visit my website, photoshopessentials.com, where you'll find hundreds of Photoshop tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from Photoshop Essentials.